the 605 freeway. And you can see there uh, going right through that red light. Uh, such a dangerous situation. Uh, and they're going to try to bring this to a stop, uh, a safe stop if possible. And the only way they're going to be able to do that, we've seen it even on surface streets. Uh, they try to deploy a spike strip. That's a lot more difficult uh, being that they got to know where this guy's going. And he's not staying in the same neighborhood, but he's running red lights at 60, 70 miles an hour. You can see his speeds uh, against uh, the other traffic there. And again, uh, if you ever encounter something like this, like these motorists are down here, never, ever try to be a hero. You just don't know what you're dealing with uh, with the suspect. This guy could be armed. Definitely dangerous because he's driving at a, uh, a very uh, high rate of speed. On Slauson, look at that, right through the red light, narrowly missing that car coming up on the 605. Bob Lauren. He's getting on the 605, getting on the 605. Yeah, he's getting on the 605 southbound now. Southbound 605, right at the 105. This is through the Norwalk and Bellflower area. Yeah, that's what we're hearing, at least two people. that uh, It appeared that somebody was in the back seat, and there may be a passenger uh, in the front as well. Uh, at least two vehicle in uh, the back. Ah, oh, look at that. He's going to lose control. He's trying to get off the freeway here. Makes an exit, an abrupt exit off the 605 freeway, just south of the 105 freeway here. He's really... Uh, traveling at a, uh, a good clip here, obviously. Uh, so coming up uh, on a very tight turn again here, getting off the freeway, off the 605. That's the only freeway he's been on, and it was for a very short time here. We'll get you this street. Look at this, weaving in and out of traffic. Now he's, ah, look at that. Just he's, This is such a dangerous situation. This is going to end uh, in, a, in a crash if he continues like this. Uh, his luck's going to run out uh, and really uh, dangerous for all these people uh, on the road here. Now he's heading back westbound. Yep, head. They're going to try to pit him. They're going to try to, they have to put this to an end uh, because he's driving. So, yeah, it, it, he is, but uh, if they get a, if they get that, that moment, because you can see this patrol car really getting up uh, closer to him. Uh, to him now several behind him busting through intersections uh, traveling uh, anywhere between 60 70 miles an hour plus at times and uh, you can see that pickup truck narrowly missed and, and it looks like he pulled over and that's what you wanted if you start seeing a lot of lights uh, you know you hear the sirens uh, and you encounter something like this slow down pull over to the right as you would for any emergency uh, vehicle uh, and this is an emergency in that they got to get this guy off the road oh look at that just busting through these red lights Again, uh, it's, it's remarkable we haven't seen a, a collision yet, but uh, the way this is going, uh, this guy is really uh, out of control here. And you can see the patrol car coming up. Here comes a passenger bus uh, pulling over into the uh, center divider there, making way for the officers. High-speed pursuit uh, at its best here in terms of how this guy is trying to get away from uh, officers. They run because they can. They're not in custody yet, uh, and, and it's remarkable that some of these guys do get, a, do get away. Uh, uh, LAPD says a little under 20% uh, actually uh, are able to uh, evade officers. Sometimes agencies like the Los Angeles Police Department, because of safety issues, will pull back uh, when uh, you have a motorist driving this fast, endangering uh, the public like this. We're going to have kids out on the roadway soon as well as schools uh, start to get into session. Looks like he's slowing down a little bit here at this intersection, but he's going right through that red light again. And those officers have to do the same, Bob and Lauren. They got to they got to keep up with this guy. So they're putting themselves in danger, the public in danger. Now, if he slows down enough, uh, they might try to click the back end of his uh, automobile and spin him out uh, and bring this to an end, uh, trying that uh, that pit maneuver. So now it's appearing that he's going back to an area where he already was. He could have stayed the course on the South 605. He didn't. He could have went northbound on the 605 as well. So 
if he has a plan, unclear at this time. Here comes another intersection here. Oh, just narrowly missing that car again. There's so many close calls. Here we go. This is an opportunity pot. Perhaps he slows down a little bit. Not much traffic here, so that could have been a, a chance to, uh, to try to uh, perform uh, a pit maneuver here. Uh, now heading uh, back in a southerly direction here, back towards Long Beach. And again, that's where this pursuit started. We still have not been able to ascertain why the pursuit started. If it was just a failure to yield, what the situation was, all we know is that this guy is driving recklessly, high rates of speed, primarily on surface streets. Only it was on the 605 for a very short time. There you go again. And now you can see some other officers. Now that he's coming back uh, into an area he already was, they're going to start alerting uh, more officers and uh, positioning them at intersections, being that he's driving so erratically. Uh, and it's amazing uh, so far, Bob and Lauren, that he has not collided with another vehicle, the way he's been running through red lights at 60-plus miles an hour. No question about it. Um, one other occupant, uh, at least one other occupant in this vehicle, again, being pursued, uh, started in Long Beach, uh, made its way north uh, up towards uh, the uh, Bellflower area. Oh, narrowly. This is so close. It's, it's, again, it's, it's amazing that he has not uh, crashed. He has not collided with another vehicle, endangering all these people. Coming up on the 91, and I'm seeing some officers positioned at this intersection here. Let's see what they try to do. You're going to see him coming into frame. Let's widen out just a, a tad here. There's that officer positioning himself, and he's going to get on the 91, so here we go. Westbound side of the 91 through Compton. He's slowing down a little bit uh, on this uh, on this on-ramp here, and we're in uh, North, North Long Beach actually now, 91 freeway westbound. This is a stretch between the 605 and the 710 freeway, and there's a lot of volume up ahead, a lot more traffic here on this stretch uh, of the 91 freeway staying in the right lane now but you're going to see uh, all that congestion coming up as we approach the 710 freeway the interchange of the westbound 91 to the 710 in north long beach so again now he's kind of heading back to a neighborhood where this all began uh, a little bit earlier this morning uh, why he's being pursued again now uh, we're still unable to get that uh, that information if it just started as a failure to yield if it's a uh, stolen vehicle there could be uh, a suspect in there wanted for a for any crime, uh, and uh, the bottom line is, is that uh, he's running from police. They lit him up. He chose not to pull over, and uh, and he's been on the move, uh, recklessly driving here on the westbound 91, here approaching the 710 freeway. And you could see that patrol car just trailing him. This is such a dangerous situation, especially on the freeway. Again, these motors on their way to work, on their way to school, appointments, and uh, they have no idea what's coming up from behind him. Look at this. Here's the volume I'm talking about. Traffic stopping off to the right shoulder there. This is just heavy volume, so that's why you're seeing the traffic slowing down. And, and this is such a dangerous situation. He's driving right up against that right shoulder wall. We're going to get in position to get a better, uh, a better uh, angle on this as he's uh, right up against that wall here. Look at that. Yeah. No question about it. And we'll see We'll see if he uh, chooses to uh, transition to the 710. That's the interchange coming up. Nope, looks like he's going to stay on the westbound side of the 91, coming out of North Long Beach into Compton here. We'll be crossing over the Los Angeles River here. Uh, actually, no, it looks like he is going to make a transition here. He's going to transition uh, to uh, either the north or southbound side of the 710. It looks like he's going to go northbound on the 710 freeway from Compton, from Long Beach, uh, up towards the 105. And, and he has just been uh, weaving in and out of traffic, so close to colliding with, with other vehicles. Unfortunately, we haven't seen that as of yet, but he's endangered the public big time here. They want to put this to an end and end quickly before anybody gets hurt. Again, northbound side of the 710, high-speed pursuit. You're watching it here on Fox 11, coming up uh, from the 91 freeway towards uh, the 105 and once he gets to that interchange he'll have another uh, option to transition the traffic on this 710 will really start to load up uh, once we reach that point that interchange of the 710 and the 105 a little lighter volume here but that's going to change rapidly in another uh, half to three quarters of a mile picking up speed uh, staying uh, in the far right lane for the most part right lanes 
uh, being pursued here by a number of vehicles. And as we widen out just a little bit, you're going to be able to see an L.A. County Sheriff's helicopter right over the L.A. River tracking his move as well. Uh, we'll, tilt, uh, we'll tilt the camera back down and, uh, and, and you'll see that. There you go, that helicopter uh, in frame there. Really low, just a couple of hundred feet. Yep, he's going to transition now uh, over to, you saw that traffic up ahead that I talked about on the North 710. Now he's going to make a transition onto the eastbound side of the 105 freeway. So heading eastbound on the 105 from the 710, taking him into Paramount, back towards Downey and back towards the 605. Look at that shot. There you go. That's what we're talking about. We're tracking this guy from the air as well. So they are not going to let this guy get get away. He's, he's, he's going he's gonna to get caught. This will end, but... Or we're hoping it's going to end safely, at least without uh, any innocent people uh, being injured. Again, we're hearing at least one other occupant in the vehicle. He's weaving over into the left lane, into the carpool lane there. And again, uh, as I mentioned with all these pursuits, he's, you know, they're keeping track of all the vehicle infractions. Obviously uh, evading police, reckless driving, uh, running through uh, multiple red lights. Uh, really, uh, really dangerous situation. There's the uh, Metro Green Line there. Yeah, each each agency uh, has has different uh, you know options in, in which they in, in which they can use, and you know we see we see some we see some uh, agencies uh, a lot more aggressive, despite the fact that uh, they are traveling at such high rates of speed. They're, they're gonna they're gonna track this guy and, and put it to an end. Other agencies uh, back off it. With uh, all that's happened, they're gonna stay on this. It appears uh, because uh, we've seen him pretty much get as reckless as you possibly can. Uh, uh, in terms of these pursuits. Westbound 105, we're hearing now uh, possibly a stolen vehicle. So uh, this car was uh, uh, looked into, the license was ran, and it came back stolen. They tried to uh, pull the uh, individual over. He didn't yield, and the pursuit was on. And the traffic's going to be backing up here as well. Again, this is the eastbound side of the 105 freeway, coming through Downey, coming back towards the 605. Look at him pulling off to the right there, evading uh, all the oncoming uh, congestion and just flying. He's going at 80 plus miles an hour, 85 miles an hour at times now on this stretch of the 105 freeway. The eastbound side is typically the lighter volume side, but it's getting busier coming up towards the 605 here. I, 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 I can't tell, I mean, it looks like maybe a Honda possibly or a, yeah, it's, it's difficult. Uh, we'll try to get a, a run on that as well, yeah. Be a Toyota. And exiting the freeway now, exiting the freeway, again, uh, four-door sedan, maybe a, maybe a Toyota Camry or a Honda Civic. This is where the 105 just dumps off uh, onto a Studebaker Road, and he's making a, a right turn on Studebaker, slowing down quite a bit. This is an opportunity where, you know, if there's no other traffic up ahead, maybe they can try for the pit. Now, you know, you would uh, possibly uh, uh, damage some of those parked cars, but uh, that's better than uh, injuring or even killing somebody because this guy has been traveling uh, at such a high rate of speed that that definitely could be a possibility. Just buzzing through uh, lights again. Southbound on Studebaker Road 
in Norwalk, coming away from the 105, paralleling the 605. We'll be coming up now on Rosecrans Avenue on the southbound side of Studebaker. This high-speed pursuit, uh, possibly a stolen vehicle, uh, that older model four-door sedan, at least one other occupant we're hearing inside that vehicle with the suspect driver here. And he's, uh, and he's making his way southbound on Studebaker. And the volume on this stretch uh, of roadway is pretty light. Uh, uh, he had the light there, thankfully. He had the green light there because uh, he's not slowing down at all. Now in a residential area, uh, we're approaching 630. More and more people on the road. There's a great shot there watching uh, that L.A. County Sheriff's helicopter uh, based at Long Beach Airport there tracking from above. I counted five units, uh, five patrol cars uh, tracking this uh, dangerous uh, suspect southbound on Studebaker Road through Norwalk, uh, coming up uh, past Rosecrans. And now and it will be approaching the 91 freeway as well in just uh, a short time. Then it would take him uh, into Cerritos and back to the south. That's where, uh, again, this pursuit started. So he's starting to do some of those uh, loops uh, around this uh, general vicinity. And, again, that happens a lot. We see it uh, in that uh, they like to travel. These uh, suspects do. They've trended that way in areas that they are familiar with, they're comfortable with. And once they get out of their comfort zone and they, they're off the freeway, uh, making a right, uh, a right turn. So he's uh, heading westbound now uh, towards us. And uh, let's see what he's doing. He's slowing down a little bit uh, at times. And again, the roadway uh, is open here at this, uh, at this time. Yeah, that's exactly right. And we do have confirmation. Definitely a stolen car. Ah, oh, another close call there. Uh, yeah, possibly. A oh, so close. Oh. Unbelievable. And, and look, bicyclists, there are some students there walking to, you know, their zero period classes, more pedestrian traffic. And here comes another intersection here. He's on Alondra Boulevard, just flying, as he has been for much of this pursuit. Westbound on Alondra Boulevard, right through the community of Bellflower now. He's just not slowing down. Here comes another one. Oh, man. Just so close. So dangerous. They, they, they have to get this guy off the road. They have, to, they have to try to get a pit maneuver at the moment they do. Uh, and, and it's becoming more and more challenging uh, with more cars, more pedestrians out there kids on their way to school for their early classes. I'm seeing bicyclists. Uh, and this guy continues on 75, 80 miles an hour plus at times, just ripping down Alondra Boulevard here through Bellflower uh, as the commute uh, is on here on this Tuesday morning. And this pursuit is on, and we got you covered from up here in Sky Fox, an L.A. County Sheriff's helicopter watching overhead uh, in addition to at least five patrol cars, Long Beach police, other agencies involved in well. All right, he's got a little... Uh, trouble here and he's gonna have to pop into this uh, Mexican restaurant parking lot to to evade that backup making a right turn now that he's slowed down a little bit let's see uh, let's see what they do here he's heading northbound still in uh, in Bellflower here I'll try to get you a street here in just a uh, just a moment turning northbound because of that congestion at that intersection on Alondra Boulevard uh, making his way north now uh, up this uh, up this major uh, street looks like it could be uh, <clears throat> Lakewood Boulevard So close.
on surface streets, through intersections with red lights. And he is northbound on Lakewood Boulevard now, still in Bellflower, coming up towards the 105 freeway again, where he will have an option to enter uh, that stretch of freeway again, which he's already uh, been on. He took that eastbound 105 to the 605 and then uh, dumped off onto Studebaker. Picking up speed again, northbound side of Lakewood Boulevard here, coming out of Bellflower, taking him into Downey. And he's got some more congestion up ahead here through a red light. Another one, bam, just like that. And so fortunate uh, that nobody's been struck yet. Definitely confirmed, yep. Ah, uh, making a left turn here. Let's see what happens. A lot of congestion here coming northbound on Lakewood Boulevard. Uh, he made a left there on Imperial uh, Highway. So now he's uh, in Downey. He's officially in the community of Downey, making his way westbound on Imperial Highway, coming off of uh, Lakewood Boulevard. You can see how there are some people that are just pulling over. They see, they hear what's coming up. Uh, and that's what you got to do uh, if you ever encounter a situation like this, because We've seen so many of these pursuits, uh, and a number of them, uh, unfortunately, uh, have ended, or, you know, ended dramatically with wrecks, with people getting injured, and unfortunately, even sometimes, uh, sometimes killed. And this guy uh, is on that course where he could really cause a horrific accident here. So. And he's making a, uh, he made a left turn uh, off of Imperial Highway, still in Downey. This uh, left turn is taking him southbound. It looks like possibly uh, uh, either uh, Paramount Boulevard uh, or uh, Orange. We'll see uh, here. I'll get you a confirmation of, uh, of that in just a moment. Again, a stolen vehicle. Uh, another occupant, in addition to the suspect uh, we're hearing inside this older uh, four-door uh, sedan, uh, possibly an older uh, model Honda or Toyota. Uh, another red light intersection. Fortunately, uh, people were slowing down on both sides, so uh, there wasn't a close call there. But we've seen so many of them. And uh, he continues to pick up speed. And uh, I'm going to see uh, if that patrol car is pulled back a little bit. Uh, he's still trailing him uh, pretty good. Five of them and an L.A. County uh, helicopter uh, as well. Southbound, he's going to be crossing over uh, the 105 freeway here. Uh, had an option there to get on the freeway. Chose to stay on a southbound route. And he's heading back towards, he's, he's kind of been trending that direction, always heading back towards the south, towards Long Beach, where this started. Uh, and we are now back into, uh, into North Long Beach, uh, heading southbound uh, here on Orange uh, towards Long Beach Airport. And it was Long Beach police that first picked this up. Picking up speed again, 70 miles an hour at times, uh, heading southbound here. Here we go, another intersection, a real busy one. Let's see what he decides to do here against the red light. Yeah, and he made it, uh, he made it through. And again, these officers have to do the same thing. Now, we've seen so many close calls uh, as well, uh, Lauren and Bob. And if, uh, if, again, if uh, this, uh, this lead patrol car, uh, the one in front, uh, has the opportunity to pit this guy. He's making a left turn on a side street now. They're going to do it. Slowing down. Residential area. Got the speed bumps. And if he knows this area, he may know it. You know, that's a, that's a possibility. Uh, you could. All right, heading back uh, northbound now. Uh, and let's see what happens. Slowing down uh, quite a bit here. 
uh, across the tracks, uh, you know, no train there. It's like that uh, pickup truck pulled him over. Now you can see some officers positioning, being that he's uh, sort of meandering in the same neighborhood, a neighborhood that he could be familiar with, uh, that he's more comfortable driving in, and that he thinks he can evade the police. And that's why they run. They're not in custody. He thinks he can get away. Some have gotten away. Uh, these Long Beach uh, police officers, though, uh, are in hot pursuit, though, of this stolen vehicle suspect. Now back northbound. Uh, and uh, this area, all these areas, these neighborhoods, uh, more and more foot traffic, uh, uh, vehicular traffic as well, against oncoming traffic, traveling uh, northbound in southbound lanes there, coming up uh, back towards the 105 freeway in Paramount. Again, uh, Wow, look at that. He is against traffic right there. He was traveling northbound on Paramount, made a, uh, made a right turn there. I think this is going to be a, a Rosecrans uh, just south of the 105 freeway here, still in Paramount. Oh, yeah, we have like 40-plus minutes, it looks like, right now. Uh, in a cul-de-sac here. This street's coming to an end. This is Foster Road. It's, he's going to be in a, he's going to be, this is a dead end. He's running into a dead end. He's running, he's running into a dead end. A dangerous situation now. He's trying to, he's backing up here. He, uh, this, this road, I saw it. Foster Road comes to an end, and he's got nowhere to go right now. He's got a gate there. He's backing up. This is such a dangerous situation. Officers with guns drawn. And let's see what he does. If he tries to make his way through here. He's, if he rams that vehicle, they're going to open fire. They will open fire. If he uses that, that vehicle, oh, gun shots fired, shots fired. Glass, you can see the glass, shots were fired. This is a situation. Now, you have to understand that deadly force is using a vehicle. He was driving right towards those officers up on the sidewalk there, and gunfire has been exchanged. Again, at least, at least two uh, people inside this stolen vehicle, and we have shots fired here. And guns are still drawn here. This is Foster Road, where Foster Road dead ends right in the community, uh, right on the border of Bellflower and Downey Road. And he came in uh, in into that. I saw I saw that upcoming here with uh, with the river here with the wash. And he, and he chose to. He obviously did not know that that was a dead end. So he's not familiar with this neighborhood at all. And this self storage facility here, uh, really uh, a really a dramatic end. Shots fired here, guns still drawn, still a very dangerous situation. We don't know if, uh, if that suspect, uh, if he's hit, if he's uh, still conscious, if this is still 
You know, a live situation until we see code four, uh, it's not. And, and again, we heard that there was at least one other occupant inside the